Highlander season review for 2019. We are closer to the 2020 season than we are to the 19 season, which is gone. These guys finished, I think, in June. Uh, so Super Rugby is a fair way back. We've had a whole World Cup since then. And we're looking through to the next Super Rugby season now. I think the New Zealand squads are naming their teams the end of this week. So that'll be interesting. I said I would finish the Super Rugby review, so let's hope I can keep my word and plow through the final eight teams that I haven't done yet. Uh, we'll start with the Highlanders because those are the ones I am up to. Uh, thank you guys for your patience if you've been waiting for one of these. Uh, they finished 8th, which was down two spots from last year where they finished 6th. Last year uh, they were 10-0-6. Oh, uh, this year it's 6 wins, 3 draws, and 7 losses. One of those draws is that cancelled game against the Crusaders. So uh, you can look at that both ways as another potential win for an even record or a potential loss to even... Uh, put the balance even more through to the side of the losses. But um, yeah, I'll go through some of the stuff that was good, some of the stuff that wasn't so good, maybe areas for, for tinkering and improvement and uh, where they can expect to be next season. They still have Aaron Major in charge. So he should be really getting his kind of game plan implemented. And we certainly saw a change in styles uh, from them last year. So it paid off in some areas and perhaps not in others. So we'll see what he's able to do with the squad uh for the 2020 season but what was good about this season second average for points scored and uh third for average tries per game so they were piling on a fair few points 28.4 uh, was their average number of points scored per game that's second only to the crusaders so that's a pretty good record in the new zealand conference which is traditionally pretty tough um, second for offload so that was definitely a big part of their game in the season just gone uh, penalties conceded they were 15th so their discipline was the best uh, of all the teams uh, I'll get a bit into some of their other stats which may be part of a reason for that but um, yeah they were penalties one they were eighth so kind of mid table for winning penalties bottom of the table for conceding so they're getting half the log as kind of a advantage there I suppose uh, so that's generally a pretty good news story but it wasn't all good uh their lineout was the 11th best in super rugby at 87 percent so towards the bottom half but not at the the very bottom where they were at the very bottom was uh winning their opponent's line out which they were 15th out of 15 teams so their own line out is okay towards the bottom end and winning opponents ball they're just not really a threat so I guess if there's one thing Aaron Major should be looking at with his squad for next year is making his side a bit more of a, uh, a force uh, at line-out time. Uh, they were fourth for uh, run meters conceded, which is, again, a pretty worrying stat. They were really shipping teams a lot of run meters, but it's an interesting one because when you look at the percentage of the time where they conceded the advantage line, their stat there is actually really good. So they were 13th out of 15 teams, which means at the good end uh, for conceding uh, the advantage line. Most of the time, compared to other teams, they didn't concede the advantage line. But how does that make sense? Because they're fourth for conceding run meters, but they're not giving up the advantage line. Well, clean breaks or line breaks, they were the second uh, in terms of conceding those. So when their line finally was busted, the other team really racked up some run meters. So I guess their defense is going hold, 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 and then when it breaks, it really goes to hell. Um, only the Sun Wolves conceded more uh, line breaks in the 2019 season than than the Highlanders. So that's that's a worrying place to be. And again, with their penalties, they were only 10th at winning kind of breakdown penalties. So towards the bottom end, I guess. If you are going to be more of a threat at the breakdown, you're probably going to concede more penalties. So that maybe wasn't a focus area for them. Kept their act clean uh, rather than trying to turn the ball over at the breakdown. That being said, in, in terms of individuals, uh, Liam Cotman was definitely their man uh, at Pilfers this year. He had probably uh, maybe a career best year, especially at the breakdown anyway. He got him in the World Cup squad uh, and whatnot. The interesting stat for them to look at also was their kicks because traditionally... Uh, at least in recent years, they've been a kick and defend team and hit teams on the counter attack, but they, they dropped their kicking rate down. They were only sixth for kicks and seventh for kick meters. Most of the time when they were kicking, they were kicking from Aaron Smith. So they're kicking from nine. A lot of teams kick from 10. Um, their line breaks, their tackle busts, their pick and drives, all kind of mid table. So nothing really, uh, outstanding there, but tackles traditionally they're number one. They kick a lot and tackle a lot, and then they hit teams on the break. But this Highlanders team, 
eighth for tackle, so it kind of drops down to mid-table. So Aaron Major wants to be playing more of a running game. Uh, that you seems to be the way they're going with the amount of offloads and run meters they're, they're winning and whatnot. So, um, yeah, uh, other individuals in terms of their squad, the, the tries were actually relatively evenly spread. They didn't have that one guy who really racked up all the tries. Like Frizzell had six, so did Tompkinson. Uh, I think the next best was a few guys on four. So they didn't have that one guy who kind of got like 10 or 13 tries or whatever. Uh, but Rob Thompson was their number one for for running the ball, average times per game. And uh, also for tackle busts. He's in like the top 10 or 15 for all Super Rugby players. So he was having a pretty good season. Um, Luke Whitelock was still their main tackling man. He was the eighth on average number of tackles per, uh, per game in Super Rugby for 2019. He's usually like number one. So even he... Kind of dropped it off um, for that season, just gone. So um, yeah, the lineouts a bit of an area of focus. Their their breakdown work was kind of middling. A lot of their attacking stats were kind of middling. Kicking and tackling kind of both shifted to middling, which is again the shift in style of their game. But they were certainly picking up a few few points. So a couple of years concern, but a lot to like about the Highlander squad, I think. When you look at the fixtures, here's how it went down. Uh, started with an away win to the Chiefs and then a home win to the Reds. So they got two wins on the trot to start with. And then they kind of went on a bad run, which really cost the season. Lost to the Rebels away. It's a long time ago, but even I can remember that they really shifted up their squad in terms of resting All Blacks for that Rebels game, and it cost them 24-19. Uh, lost to the Hurricanes away. Crusaders game was cancelled. Lost to the Blues, which is kind of like an all-new low because the Blues hadn't beaten a New Zealand team in a long time. Uh, so, yeah, that was a bad one, 33-26 uh, at Eden Park. Lost to the Hurricanes away, so the Hurricanes did the double over them, and then lost the one to the Crusaders. So that was one, two, three, four, five losses with a, um, a cancelled game in the middle. So that chunk of the season, pretty poor, but then they bounced back, a win over the Blues down in Dunedin, huge win over the Sunwolves, 52-0. Uh, draw with the Chiefs, beat the Jaguars, which in the scheme of things is actually a pretty good result. Uh, 32-27, because remember, Jaguars ended up making the final. Uh, Tour of South Africa didn't go well, lost to the Lions, lost to the Stormers. Drew with the Bulls at home, and from memory, I don't think Pollard played in that game, so it's probably one they should have won. Uh, and then they had an, a do-or-die game against the Waratahs. The Waratahs were also in with a chance for that final playoff spot, but the, the Highlanders absolutely did them 49 points to 12. That was a real hiding, that game. I remember that one. Uh, so yeah, the Highlanders, despite... I think they needed other results to go their way and they needed to get a big win. It all fell into place for them uh, to make the, the knockout stages so they didn't drop off. They still finished above the Blues, which is always a good thing uh, um, for them, not for me as a Blues fan. Uh, but then that gave them a quarterfinal date against the Crusaders, which they duly lost 38 points to 14. Crusaders went on to win uh, the whole thing, so there's definitely no shame uh, in that. So, yeah, I guess, I mean, if you're looking for 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 really good moments i guess in a way win against the chiefs but the chiefs really did start their season uh poorly that's a good thing i think that 52 nil win over the Sunwolves. there was no i mean the 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 highlanders were kind of in that form that they could have dropped that game but they they really picked things up which was uh which was good and then that final game against the waratahs is probably the the game of their season but yeah that, that kind of purple patch at the start losing to the blues that's that's got to be a low Again, I say that as a Blues fan. Um, next season, they are without a fair few guys. Tyrell Lomax is going to the Hurricanes, which is a disappointing one for the Highlanders. Uh, you don't kind of mind losing some of the guys to maybe Japan or to France or whatever, but when you're losing them to another Super Rugby team, especially when they're a talent like that, it's um, it's pretty disappointing. Uh, Luke Whitelock's going to Japan. Himopo's going to Japan. Squire's going to Japan. Banks is gone. Uh, leaving the Highlanders again, this time to Japan instead of Italy. Buckman's going to Japan. Fadis is already with Ulster. I've seen him playing in the Pro 14. Tavita Lee's gone to Japan. Waisaki Naholo's gone to London Irish. Uh, ben Smith is going to France. And of all those guys leaving, uh, six of them were some of their kind of top, top 15 uh, guys in terms of the number of minutes they played for the Highlanders in, in Super Rugby this season just gone. So if you rank them, by all the Highlanders players by minutes, yeah, six of their uh, their top guys are going. So um, that's it's a it's a fair chunk of players to replace. That being said, they do have Mitch Hunt coming in from the Crusaders. The question at ten is going to be an interesting one next season because 
they've got Josh Mackay, who's still there, but I think they'll probably use him more at fullback. Uh, they've still got Bryn Gatland on the books, and I'm not quite sure what's happening with Josh Yuan now. I believe he signed with Otago at the Midas 10 level for 2020, but I'm not sure. I couldn't find a report that confirmed that was for the Highlanders as well. Uh, I guess we will find out on, I think it's the 12th. What's the date today? Today's the 11th. Is it tomorrow? Surely not. Uh, maybe it is. Uh, the Super Rugby teams are going to be confirmed. So we'll see what's happening with Josh. Uh, but other than Mitch Hunt coming in, there's Nareki coming in from the Mitre 10 Cup, uh, Punivai from the Crusaders, and Michael Collins from the Blues. So I think Blues fans are going to be happy to see the back of him. But uh, we'll see how he goes down the Highlanders because a lot of players tend to play better when they leave the Blues. I'm throwing a lot of shade at the Blues today, and I'm a Blues fan. I must be in a bad mood. Um, other guys who are staying, Coltman, Dixon, uh, Aaron Smith, Tay Walden, all those guys are still going to be there. Aaron Major is going to be there as well. So, um, yeah, how the Highlanders go will be an interesting one. They won't want to leave their run for the playoffs quite so late. They'll still want to finish above the Blues. I think that has to be uh, kind of minimum uh, requirements for them. But, uh, yeah, we will see. Again, sorry, it's a bit late. But uh, Super Rugby is only a couple of months away. So, um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the Highlanders season gone. How are you looking for them in the future? Do you think they're a chance? And, um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.